There's an energy about this conference that I, I have never seen in any other type of scientific conference. The people who are here are so excited to learn and so excited to also share their knowledge with everybody else. Science Food Camp is not a traditional scientific conference. Uh, in fact, this kind of format is known as an unconference, um, and it was inspired by uh, conferences that had already been going on in the technology sphere, uh, run by Tim O'Reilly and his colleagues. Hi, I'm Tim O'Reilly. I'm the founder and CEO of O'Reilly Media, and I'm the O'Reilly in uh, Friends of O'Reilly, uh, which was the name behind uh, Foo Camp. Uh, we had moved into a new building in 2001. We had a lot of empty space, and we thought, let's throw a kind of a party a weekend camp out for all of our friends. We did it the first time just for a lark. It was, it was for fun, but then it turned out to be such a powerful idea and we learned so much from it. Essentially the idea is that we invite uh, two or three hundred interesting people from a variety of fields. That means from across different scientific fields, but it also means from the sort of, as it were, the periphery of, of science. So writers, philosophers, business people with, a, with an interest in science, and we let them really determine what the, what the subjects of discussion are going to be. Google hosts Science Food Camp very simply because we think that cross-discipline uh, work in science is both difficult and something we should encourage. Uh, there's a lot to be gained by scientists of different stripes and different fields talking to each other, and it's actually very rare uh, in the world for people to do that. Meeting so many people who are so passionate about whatever field that they're in and hearing them share that passion and their excitement and enthusiasm, what they're working on, and then seeing the connections because it's all related to things that other people are working on that seem completely unrelated and to see them realize we're actually solving different aspects of the exact same problem and we never would have known it. Hi, my name's Andy Hicks, and um, I'm from Drexel University, Department of Mathematics. I'm a mathematician who does mostly applied things, and I came to SciFu to show some of the mirrors that I've designed, which include a driver's side mirror without a blind spot, and this mirror, which is a non-reversing mirror. And if you look up, I've got some text here that says SciFu, but if you look at it reflected in this mirror, you can still read it as if it's regular text. My technique for designing mirrors is very general in a way. Um, you ask a question like, how do I want to see a portion of the room? That requirement translates into some mathematical equations. I take those equations, I have a lot of computer software I've written over the years, then the computer will spit out the shape for me and I can see a picture of it. One thing I love about SciFu was the informality. Mathematics is very formal. The traditions go back hundreds of years, and a lot of the ways people behave are very much the same. SciFu is um, completely, uh, well, it's an unconference, it's, it's unstructured. So Science Food Camp doesn't have any uh, predefined program. Uh, we start off on the first evening with a blank schedule board, and we ask the attendees themselves to fill it in for us. And so when you have 200 people standing up at once, going towards the board, saying, oh, I'd love to talk about X, Y, or Z, or I'd love to, to get this person to give a talk about that. It, it has this sort of glorious chaos. The real secret of it is to invite interesting, thoughtful people. I mean, come on, if you had a bunch of really smart people over to your house, would you think you had to have a program? Uh, you know, we've invited in a couple hundred of the smartest people on the planet. Of course they're gonna find things to talk about. And it works every time. My name is Matt Cowell, and a year ago, a friend and I started DIYBio.org, which is a community for amateur scientists online. And uh, essentially, it's a bunch of people interested in doing non-institutional science. So taking the notion that you don't have to go to get a PhD for six years to figure out how to do science. You really can do it with duct tape, saran wrap, sugar. Well, I decided to run a session on programming bacteria with biological parts, because I have some friends who've developed what they call standardized biological parts. Uh, the BioBrick standard. And it's really neat. Um, it's a synthetic biology idea. They basically put uh, the DNA, actually I printed this, so I put the DNA of the on-off switch and the gene for making the banana odor 
in E. coli on this card. It's right here, it's this colored part, plus documentation about how the part works. And to me, it's really interesting because you can imagine this plus some cells that are really ready to execute the DNA, which we had in this case, donated by a local scientist. Those two things combined, maybe you could have a deck of these, um, and you, you would basically be able to give that to someone and they could experiment with all sorts of little biological Legos, make new combinations, and really get a sense for how easy biological engineering can be, or at least biological playing. If you get beads of, of liquid in the tube, you can just sweep your arm like that and the centripetal force will suck it down. Actually, this is some bacteria with the, that biological part put inside of them. And they're slowly growing in this liquid right now, this broth. So what we just did outside was um, take the card, cut the little piece off of, of DNA from the paper, drop the paper into some cells that were ready to um, absorb the DNA, and then we put essentially the cells into broth so they could grow and multiply. And tomorrow, hopefully, this will smell like banana. The core of the food camp idea as it's evolved is really about cross-fertilization between disciplines. I was part of a session, there was a group of us who were talking about online communities and the potential of children or volunteers worldwide actually browsing through high-resolution images um, to actually help us find real fossils in the field at Lake Turkana and the potential now is there if we can secure the online, the high resolution imagery. There have been a number of very interesting people here that I've been able to talk to, particularly from the Google imagery, Google Earth, Google Mars group, who have a good handle on high resolution imagery and how to actually bring that across to the public. And I think now we're probably at the beginning of, of trying to make this happen. The collaboration that has led us to SAIFU is a great example also of the kind of thing we're trying to accomplish. Think about it for a moment. We have three different organizations, very different businesses, uh, Google, uh, the search engine, uh, O'Reilly, a computer book publisher and conference producer, and uh, Nature Publishing Group, a scientific journal, uh, coming together to create this cross-disciplinary event. And what's so important there is that for none of us is it directly connected with uh, our explicit business. Uh, what we're all interested in doing as organizations is creating value for the world and for our community. So my name is Pavel Curtis. I'm a uh, computer scientist, uh, software engineer, software architect at Microsoft. I uh, also run a very small online store for mechanical puzzles. I was commissioned by the organizers of SciFu09 to create a custom puzzle just for SciFu. I think some people are actually trying to solve it, so I'm, I'm hoping more people try to solve it. So now this puzzle, uh, I, I wanted to design a puzzle that had an answer not just a solution. That's to say, I wanted there to be some one word answer that you somehow got out of solving it, but that's not what normally happens with mechanical puzzles. So the idea with this puzzle was, not only do you have to put all the pieces in the tray, it tells you at the bottom, put all the pieces in the tray, and that's one thing, and it fills up the tray. But there's several ways to do that, and most of them aren't satisfying because these little bars that are on the pieces don't line up with anything. And it turns out, if you do find the way to put them in with all the bars that lining up, what you'll discover is that's made another puzzle. And now you have to solve that puzzle. And it turns out that when you solve that puzzle, there's a third puzzle. And after you've solved that one, there's a fourth puzzle, and that one gives you the final answer. And that's that notion of a multi-stage solving experience was something I really wanted to play with. And the puzzle that I designed for SciFu is, in fact, the latest in my series of multi-stage solving experiences. So it's another four-stage puzzle. So for the people at SciFu, keep working. You'll know when you've finished.
My name is Joy Reidenberg. I'm a comparative anatomist. I teach anatomy at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine, and I do my research in looking at animals adapted to extreme environments. And this is my second SciFu conference. One of the great things about Science Food Camp is the bones. So I brought with me a crocodile skull. This is actually one from Australia. And this skull, it's beautiful. It's got all these really cool teeth in here. But what I really like about the skull is the nostrils on the top here. So if you look at you can see these little nostrils right here. And what's amazing about this animal is that it can grab its prey and start to drown its prey by bringing it under the water, but still be able to breathe because the nose is all the way out here at the tip. And so it can actually be pulling something under the water and still breathe on its own. There's a lot of talking, and then there's a lot of uh, eating, and there's a lot of talking and a lot of eating, and then suddenly it's over. Talking to people, their brains haven't yet processed what has happened this weekend. And so this comic uh, uh, is sort of my uh, improvised attempt to capture that feeling. So if I had to sum up the essence of Saifu, I think it's all about the people. And I think uh, what I would say is great people make a great event. There's a veritable fountain of great ideas coming out of everybody. And uh, this is just like conversational paradise. Tim O'Reilly likes to say we're bridging new connections in the global brain or something and uh, it, it really feels like there's a seizure going on or something. It's great. We're ultimately looking to make connections between people who don't know each other uh, but who should. And that's why we don't invite back the same people every year. We're always looking to make new connections. <laughs>